So they got a big guy to lead it. He's the executive chairman, Dr. Osama Fayed, an entrepreneur himself, chairman of DYG.com, a new generation internet community and rich media content sharing site focused on the Arabic speaking online audience. In the U.S., he's CEO of Open Insights LLC, a data strategy, technology, and consulting firm. Earlier, we saw my co founder that served as CEO of DigiMind Incorporated, a data analysis and mining company that he launched, ended up doing web analytics for some of the world's largest corporations. Then he co founded and led the DMX Group, a data mining and data strategy startup, consulting technology company that was so successful was acquired by Yahoo, which led to Usama becoming Chief Data Officer and Executive Vice President of Yahoo in California. So Dr. Usama Faya, we see the potential of the Jordanian entrepreneur starting a company, employing people, uh, selling out, had significant personal gain, and then starting more companies. Who better to lead Oasis 500? Let's meet Dr. Usama Fayyad. Very rough and very uh, tough schedule 
to launch it and do one wave after another uh, of, of, of this uh, uh, training companies and then funding them and then funding them again and then getting them out to, to get angel investors and, and finally uh, become public companies. So what do you need to cross this desert? What are the steps you have to undertake to, to create the Oasis 500 and make it start to work? So, uh, as we said, funding in the MENA region doesn't cover the early stage and the angel stage. So what we need, uh, or what Oasis 500 does, is four things, right? We have a training program to make sure that you understand what it takes to make a business. Many people have a business idea, but they don't understand what it takes to build a business. That you need marketing, you need sales, you need a business model. You know, many people I ask, what's a business model? They'll talk about a business plan, which is not a business model. A business model is how do you make money. Uh, you need startup funding and uh, mentorship. Uh, an incubation. Uh, the startup funding we will give. We, if you qualify, if you make it through our boot camp and you meet some of our characters who made it through, uh, you get 10,000 10, dinars, about $15,000. Uh, and then if you qualify for the next stage, you get 50k uh, to get going. You need mentorship. A lot of the capital that goes into companies, myself included, um, I raised a lot of money in my time in the United States and I look back at some of the mistakes I made and millions were wasted because I made the wrong choice because there wasn't somebody there telling me, you know what, don't do this, don't sign this deal, don't sign this building, uh, don't hire this sales exec, go for somebody like this, etc. Lots of money gets wasted, lots of capital, which is oxygen for a startup, mm -hmm. uh, gets wasted. And then the fourth thing we do is angel networks. People in the Middle East, they know investment. If you want to create a project to invest in land, or to build a gas station in Amman, or to build a building, you can raise capital in two hours, three hours, a day. Right? Everybody jumps. That same crowd doesn't understand that there's a very similar analogy going on in cyberspace, in, in the computer world, which is, why not invest in these great pieces of real estate on the internet? Uh, you know, pieces of land with a nice view, with great value that will grow at a much higher multiple, much faster, and in the process create jobs, create a whole new economy, etc. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So, um, all right. There are a lot of organizations that will fund at this level of development in the U.S. Right? But you said, ah, really here, right? So, what? Uh, so, do you just take a U.S. model and apply it here, or? Does Oasis 500 have to be different in some way from the similar organizations we see in the U.S.? Is there something uniquely uh, Middle Eastern about it, Jordanian about it? Or are there just U.S. examples that you just apply? So the first thing we did, of course, is look, look to places where this model has worked. And what we found, uh, the models we liked are models like uh, Y Incubator, which is really based around you know, one mentor, uh, Mr. Graham, who sort of likes to mentor these startups. Uh, another one that we really liked a lot is called Techstars, which is based on a network of mentors, which is what, what we do, and that's why I emphasize the, uh, the network uh, of mentor approach. That model works, right? Now, that model does not work in the Middle East. Why? Because we still need a way or pipeline of people who have been trained on the basis of business, who have the mentality of understanding, yes, I will give you a share of my company, take 5%, 10%, and enable me to move 10 times faster, 100 times faster. We need that culture to be established. So to address that, uh, that part, we created that whole training program, the boot camp, which is very intensive, lots of days and nights of hard work that we use to train our entrepreneurs and whoever goes through it, I think, probably have experienced something that I hope will change their lives. And if they continue, it would be handy. If they don't continue with us, we give them tools that they can go and, and build other businesses. So the training program is unique. And the angel network, our administering it, and our, our, our encouraging it, is also unique because in the U.S., the, the system has been going for decades. And you have these angel networks. Once you have an idea and you've proven the prototype, you can just hold a couple of meetings and there's a lot of people who say, you know, I get it, there's an infrastructure, there's a bunch of law firms who know how to do it, and within days to weeks, you have your age around. This does not exist in the Middle East, and that's why we created essentially